Let's work with multiplying decimals, where there are zeros in our factors. The approach that we have been taking is we have been looking at the number of places that is within the each of those factors. So there's one place value there, one decimal place value there, and there's one decimal place value there. So within our answer, we'll have two decimal places. Our next step was to go ahead and multiply, ignoring those decimal points. So we just have 6 and 0, 6, which is just 6 times 3. Because we wouldn't write 6 as 0, 6, and we wouldn't write 3 as 0, 3. Those are just placeholders. So we have some zeros within our question here. So we just multiply 3 times 6, which is 18. And what we do then is that we need two decimal places. Since we need two decimal places, we'll go ahead and count from the right there. 1 and 2. If we place our decimal point right here, we have that decimal 0.18. And when we write a 0.18 and we don't have any holes, we do write that 0 in front of it. So again, looking at this problem here, we have 0 0.7 times 0 0.5. So we just go ahead and multiply the 5 times the 7 to get 35. There's two decimal places within our problem here, so there will be two decimal places within our answer. We start from the right here, and we go 1 and 2 to place the decimal point. Since our answer is going to be 0.35, we go ahead and place a 0 in front of it. Two decimal places, two decimal places. Time for you to go ahead and try. Please copy these down and hit pause so that you can solve them. Remember to place the decimal point appropriately. For that first problem, we should have gone 3 times 9, which is 27. Two decimal places, two decimal places then. So we end up with 0 0.27. Please make sure to put the 0 in front of the decimal point, indicating 0 ones, if there are no holes there. 5 times 8 is 40. Decimal place. There's two of them. So we write 0 0.40. I would have also accepted 0 0.4 as an answer, as the value of 0 0.4 is the same as the value of 0 0.40. 4 tenths does equal 40 hundredths. Thinking about this another way, if I was to write each of those decimals back out in fraction form, 0 0.9 would be written as 9 tenths, which is like that there. 0 0.7 would be rewritten as 7 tenths, which is this right here. And what am I doing with both of those? I'm multiplying with both of those, so I'd go 9 times 7, and 9 tenths times Seven tenths, nine times seven in the numerator, which is sixty three, and ten times ten, which is one hundred. So sixty three hundredths, written back in decimal form, that's zero point six three. Just as before, if I do not want to do all that work, I'm just showing you as to why it is this is true. We multiply that seven times the nine, which is sixty three. And since there are two decimal places within our whole problem, one decimal place there, one decimal place there, we have to have two decimal places within our answer. And that's why we place our decimal point there, and we put the zero in front of it. Here we have 1.2 times 0 0.6, and so we still have a zero within our product. Now, what we stated to do is to ignore the decimal point to begin with. So 0, 6 is just 6. So really we're just multiplying 1 and 2 times 6 or 12 times 6, which is 72. And then we have to place our decimal point. So there, if we're looking at this here, there's one decimal place there, one decimal place there, so there should be two decimal places within our answer. 
That's why I go back here. One and two. I place my decimal point, and I do place a zero as well. And really, technically, that answer should be written right here, 0 0.72. Because if I was to look at this math, 12 times 6 is no way 0 0.72. 12 times 6 is 72. We have 2.3 times 0 0.5. And so when we're going to solve this here, again, we're looking at the number of decimal places here within our problem when we place our decimal point. We're also thinking of the multiplication problem, what, if we're ignoring the decimal point? Ignore that decimal point. We're thinking 2, 3, and we're thinking 0, 5, or 23 times 5. So we start with the 5 times the 3, which is 15, place the 5 and regroup the 1. 5 times the 2, which is 10, plus 1, which is 11. And then we're ready to place our decimal point. We count from right to left, and then so we need two decimal places, so we have one and two. I'll place my decimal point, and then I'll look at my answer again and make sure I have the correct number of decimal places. Two here, two within the problem here. That means our product, as long as I multiplied correctly, is correct. Here are a few problems for you to try. Go ahead and copy them down and solve them. Hit pause. For that first problem, ignore the decimal point. 6 times 8 is 48. 8, regroup the 4. 6 times 3 is 18. Times 4 is 22. And again, this 0 here, then that doesn't mean anything, because if I did multiply that, it would just have been 0. And if I added them back together, it would still be 228. I then place my decimal point, since there are 2, decimal places within my problem, I place the decimal point there, 1 and 2. I've written out my answer for 5.7 times 0 0.4. I just haven't placed my decimal point yet. And where did you place your decimal point? Right there. It turned out that your two answers happened to be the same from what it is that I had chosen. The process, when we have more decimal places, is still exactly the same. We take a look here, and we only have one decimal place right here, three decimal places right here, one and three is four, so we should have four decimal places within our answer. We still start with this here, where we're going five times two. Five times two is ten. I place the zero and regroup the one. Five times three is fifteen, plus one is sixteen. 6, regroup the 1. 5 times 6, which is 30, plus 1, which is 31. 1, regroup the 3. And 5 times 0, which is 0, plus 3, which is 3. And again, I stated there's 1, 2, 3, and 4 decimal places within my question here, so there should be 4 decimal places within my answer. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Place my decimal point, and then I count it again. One, two, three, four. Yep, there's four here as well. And remember to place that zero there as well. This actually does make sense for this answer. 0 0.316. Hey, 0 0.5, isn't that just half? One half does equal 0 0.5. If I take one half of 0 0.632, do I get 0 0.316? 0.316, is that really half of it? If I added two of them together, is it really 0.632? And as you see, with my work here, it is. I might be given a problem like 1.2 times 0.03. I could still write it vertically, like this here, 0.03. And if I look at those numbers again, and I think about this here, for our first factor, 1, 2, that's 12. For our second factor, 0, 0, 3, that's 3. So the math fact that is helping us is 12 times 3. 12 times 3 is 36. 3 times that 2 
and 3 times that 1. Now the problem is here where it is that I'm looking here and I need 1, 2, 3 decimal places within my answer. And yet I only have two digits here, a 3 and a 6. So what I do is this. I go 1 and 2. I place a 0 here so that I can go 3 and place another 0 in front of it. 0 0.036. So I have three decimal places within my answer. Again, same type of approach. I have 7.6 times 0 0.05. So what I do again is I line them up 7.6 times 0 0.05. And by lining up, what I mean is I write them vertically, and I line up some of those digits. I don't have to line up the decimal points in this case, because I'm going to ignore the decimal points. 7, 6, 0, 0, 5. So that first factor is just 76, and that second factor, 0, 0, 5, is just 5. 5 times 6 is 30. Place the 0, regroup the 3. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 3 is 38. In this case, 1, 2, 3, I do have enough places to place that decimal point. So I place the decimal point there, and I put a 0 there. If I did not have enough decimal place values, so for instance, if my answer had been 24, and I needed to have 3 decimal places in that there, I would go 1, 2, 3, place the 0, and place the decimal point. So it's 0 0.024, so I would end up with three decimal places. And so you put the 0 to the furthest left there. You can't put it to the right because then you're going to move those place values. And that's all you need to know about multiplying decimals with zeros.